Whether you run a business, a side hustle, or just need to collect payments and donations from friends and family, there are so many reasons why you should be accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. In this video, I'm going to outline why exactly that is, protect you against doing it the absolute wrong way, and show you three different options, maybe four, ranging from the easy way to the most secure way for you to choose from. I'll also help you decide which of these options is the best for you. Of course, if you already know you want the most secure option or the easiest option, feel free to hit the links in the description or the auto-generated chapters below that hopefully YouTube will get right to jump around within the video. All right, let's dive in. First, why accept Bitcoin? For those of you who aren't yet sure whether or not that you should accept Bitcoin, let's really quickly cover the various benefits. First, Bitcoin is more secure than other payment forms with no fraud or chargebacks. As someone who has run e-commerce companies for more than 20 years, I can tell you that I've lost tens of thousands of dollars to fraud and chargebacks, none of which exists with Bitcoin. Second, Bitcoin is permissionless, meaning nobody can shut you down or stop you from receiving payments, as we saw with the truckers in Canada. Now, you might not be doing something illegal, but Stripe, PayPal, and so on can still shut down your account and therefore shut down your business. Just ask one of the millions of Russians, even expatriates who don't support the regime, trying to do business online today. Third, Bitcoin fees are much lower than credit card fees, and they're paid by the buyer. Whereas you currently lose roughly 3% of your revenue to Stripe, Visa, and MasterCard, with Bitcoin, you'll pay no fees at all, and your customers will pay a fraction of 3%. Fourth, Bitcoin actually appreciates over time. Sure, the value is volatile today, but let me tell you that I began accepting Bitcoin in my business in 2017, when Bitcoin was around $2,500 per coin. Now, I'm not going to say how many customers bought using Bitcoin, but I can say that I've made over 10X over the last five years just by holding that Bitcoin. No wonder I offer a 20% discount if customers pay me by Bitcoin. And finally, accepting Bitcoin drives adoption, which increases value. The real main reason to accept Bitcoin in your business is because you believe in it. And if you believe in it, you want to see it succeed and benefit people all over the world. And the best way to ensure Bitcoin's success is to accelerate adoption. Okay, now that we have those reasons out of the way, I hope you're convinced that you simply must accept Bitcoin in your business or side hustle or even individually. So now let's talk about some of the different ways to do this. And there are quite a few, some much better than others. In order to evaluate these different means of accepting Bitcoin, I evaluated each of them according to the following set of criteria, giving each one of them a score from one to five. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you all of it on a chart and a table with quantitative metrics for those of you who love data. Here are my criteria. Security, or how secure are you against attacks? Privacy, how much can others see about your transactions and commerce? Cost, how cost effective is it both for you and for your end customer? Are there any extra fees and does it support the cheaper to use Lightning Network for dirt cheap, nearly free and instant transactions? Setup, how difficult is it for you to get started? Self custody, how much are you depending on others to hold your funds for you? Customer convenience, or how easy is it for customers to actually pay you with this method, both for online payments and for in-person ones? Vendor convenience, how easy is it for you to collect payment on a day-to-day -day basis, both online or in-person? And automation and integration, how easy is it for you to connect the method to your website, your accounting system, your CRM, or whatever else you wish to use to store information? All right, are you ready? Let's first dive in with the wrong ways to do it. There are a lot of ways to accept Bitcoin, but there is one patently wrong way. Posting a static QR code or Bitcoin address on your website or cash register, even if that address is to a cold hardware wallet, but especially if that address comes from a custodial wallet like your Coinbase account. Let's look at why. Security. 
Admittedly, this method is very secure, assuming you are using an address that you got from a hardware wallet, paper wallet, or even a software wallet that you actually hold the keys to. There's no way for people to intercept these transactions and no additional risks that aren't present in every other form of Bitcoin implementation, such as the need to actually secure your keys and keep them somewhere safe. So I give it a five out of five. Privacy. Now this is where the real problems start. If you share a static address, as opposed to something that generates addresses automatically for every transaction, everyone who sees that address will be able to see the entire transaction history of the address. They'll know what you were paid, when, and how much. And that sounds like the tax man's wet dream. So for this, I give it a one out of five. Cost. With this method, there are no middlemen involved and theoretically you could even put up a static LN address enabling people to actually send you Lightning Network payments, though those would potentially be custodial unless you're using our most secure method that we're gonna talk about later anyways. So while the fees will be low compared to other methods, you'll probably really only receive on-chain transactions and that can get expensive. That's why I give this method a three. Setup. Truthfully, this is about the easiest thing in the world to set up. Tape a QR code to the cash register, add it to your website's checkout page, or just put an address in the website's footer. It's limited, as we'll see in a second, but it doesn't get much easier than that. So I have to give it a five. Self-custody. Of course, the level of self-custody here depends on how you actually implement this, and it could be a one if you, for example, shared an address from your Coinbase wallet. But assuming that you use an address from your Trezor or Keystone, and you are in complete control of your funds, well, then it's a five. Customer convenience. On the one hand, it doesn't get any easier for your customer than just scanning a QR code and sending you some Bitcoin. On the other hand, they will be required to calculate that price in Bitcoin, assuming you price in dollars or euros, unless you do that calculation for them, and they're gonna have to manually enter in the amount and probably an email and email you the transaction ID so that you know which order corresponds to which payment, it's complicated, and for that reason, I actually settled on a three for convenience. Now, vendor convenience, here again, the same issues apply as with customer convenience. It's easy to accept Bitcoin this way, and it requires no maintenance, but it is a pain if you have to manually calculate the conversion rate from fiat, and it's even more of a pain if you're getting a lot of transactions and have to try to figure out which orders correspond to which transactions without any kind of comments or order information attached to them. So again, I give it a three. Automation and integration. Now this is another place where this method really suffers. As far as I know, there are no services currently available that will attach to something like a watch-only wallet to your QuickBooks, your Shopify store, your CRM, or anything like that. So you can forget about automated order processing. You're going to have to manually check every single payment and update the order, plus get ready to manually input all that information into your accounting system, your CRM, blah, blah, blah. It gets the lowest score possible here, a one out of five. The stupid way. Moving on to the next method, you'll see that there are much more sophisticated, much easier ways to integrate Bitcoin deeply into your business. Now these methods include using readily available commercial services such as CoinGate, BitPay, Coinbase Commerce, and so on. Now these services are each a little different, but they have a lot of overlap and similarities. So I'm going to treat them as if they're all one, and please forgive me if I get one feature of one of them slightly wrong. First, let's start out with security. These services are generally considered to be very secure as the companies that run them have a lot of expertise in the way of security. With that said, they are very attractive honeypots to potential attackers and are bigger and more appealing as a target for hackers than just one personal website. Plus, as we'll see later, your funds are at least temporarily stored in a custodial wallet, and for this reason, I give them a three. Privacy. These services are designed with some privacy in mind. Now, unlike the previous method, they generate a new receiving address for every single transaction, which is a crucial feature that you should expect from any implementation. And they're even more private over the Lightning Network. Now, with that said, they still are a private company storing data about your transactions and income, and I'm sure that if they were subpoenaed, they would comply. 
So for this reason, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a four out of five. Cost. Now this is where these services run by for-profit companies fall behind. While transaction fees on-chain are low and most of these companies now finally, thank God, offer Lightning Network, companies like CoinGate and BitPay charge a 1% transaction fee. Now this might seem very low if you're paying 2.9% to Stripe, but it is highway robbery for Bitcoin transactions. And that's why I give them a one. Setup. These services charge a premium price and in exchange, you get a premium experience. They have integrations available for most e-commerce platforms such as Shopify, Magento, and more. It doesn't get any easier than this. Five out of five. Self-custody. Now here's another place where these guys fall short. In order to ensure that they're able to collect their 1% fee, most of these types of services accept payments into their own wallets, even if those wallets are cold storage. And then they allow you to withdraw the net amount to a wallet of your choosing. Now, while this might not seem like a big deal, it really defeats the purpose of Bitcoin on multiple levels. First of all, it's introducing a middleman to an otherwise peer-to-peer -peer technology. Second of all, it's entrusting someone else, someone who can shut your account down at any time to custody your funds until you have a chance to withdraw them. And that earns them a one. Customer convenience. As with most of the remaining methods on our list, these types of services are really convenient for your customers. This includes automatic currency conversion from any cryptocurrency or fiat currency, auto-generated invoices with the proper amounts and comments, and speedy confirmation of payment. Naturally, for their premium price, they get a five. Vendor convenience. Same here as above. These services are as convenient as can be, and they get a five. Automation and integration. Here, once again, these services really shine. They integrate with pretty much everything from your website to your accounting software and things like Zapier. However, I was actually surprised to see that some of the most prominent players like BitPay and CoinGate may not yet have fully fledged point of sale terminals for brick and mortar businesses. So that actually brought them down from a five to a four. All in all, I call this the stupid way because only someone who doesn't really know anything about Bitcoin, a big corporation like Walmart, for example, would be stupid enough to make these compromises and pay these incredibly high fees. It really just goes against everything that Bitcoin is about. The easy way. Okay, you've made it through the two services that I really advise against. Now let's talk about the ones I feel comfortable recommending, starting with the absolute easiest one, Breeze. Breeze is a semi-non-custodial Lightning wallet, although I know that they'll say that they're fully non-custodial, which sets up a Lightning node right on your device. It also provides a point of sale terminal built right in, which is great for brick and mortar businesses. Let's go ahead and evaluate by our same criteria. Security. Breeze is open source, non-custodial, allows you to back up your own node and widely considered to be secure. Still, the funds are stored right on the device's prune node and someone could swipe that device and steal your funds. What's more, your backup is stored in the cloud, not via a written down seed phrase on a piece of paper. Plus, I'm still not super comfortable with the whole idea of how a mobile node works and the fact that Breeze is managing all the private channels between you and their own routing node, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a three. Privacy. Breeze works both on main chain transactions, the normal Bitcoin transactions, and on Lightning Network, which is super private. And the app requires no personal information to set up. So while Breeze will have information about your transactions, they have no idea who you are. And this earns them a five. Cost. Because Breeze operates predominantly on Lightning Network, the fees should be incredibly low for your buyers. They also don't charge any transaction fee, at least not in the way that BitPay does. However, Breeze's Lightning node does charge very high routing fees on many of their channels, and they do charge you a one-time 2000 Satoshi fee to create private channels between you and their node, after which your clients will usually end up paying their fairly high routing fees. Now granted, you would have to pay to open up channels if you ran your own node anyways, but you definitely wouldn't be paying anywhere near 2000 Satoshis per channel. 
Now you'll also generally pay those high routing fees if you wanna move your Bitcoin somewhere else, like an exchange or a cold wallet. So for this reason, I have to give them a three out of five. Setup. As far as point of sale goes, Breeze is the easiest thing in the world to set up. You install it on an iPad, back it up to the cloud, and put the iPad at the checkout desk. Breeze doesn't offer any integration to your website, but that's considered elsewhere in my criteria. So as far as ease goes, we're gonna give it a five. Self-custody. As I mentioned before, Breeze does give you a form of self-custody, but your Bitcoin is still stored in channels with their node. Now, I was tempted to give them a three, but I think that's just because I'm not familiar with really how mobile nodes work and how they actually function on a nuts and bolts level. So I'll go ahead and give them a four. Customer convenience. Breeze does not integrate with a website, making it impossible for customers to buy from you online. What's more, invoices are not auto-generated, so customers will have to wait for you to enter in all the items and amounts, etc. So they're gonna go ahead and get a two. Vendor convenience. Like I mentioned before, to use Breeze at say a farmer's market, you're going to do a lot of manual data entry for every transaction. I will say though that it is pretty convenient in terms of the fact that Breeze is going to set up the channels and manage your liquidity for you. So for this reason, I'm gonna give them a three here. Automation and integration. No automated invoice generation, no integration to something like a Zapier or QuickBooks, and pretty rudimentary reporting and data exporting give this solution a one out of five. The good compromise. All right. Now we're heating up and moving to one of the best, if not the best all around way to accept Bitcoin in your business. And that is through a hosted enterprise grade node provider such as Voltage.Cloud paired with the free and open source payment gateway, BTC Pay. Now BTC Pay is a very sophisticated and feature rich payment gateway that pretty much one-to-one -one replaces BitPay with just a line of code replacing it out cleanly. It's complete with donation buttons, POS terminal, crowdfunding apps, integrations, and even a full-fledged API for custom applications. Best of all, it's completely free. Just like these videos, which reminds me, if you're enjoying this video and you wanna see more videos like it, then please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon because it really helps support the channel and keep our content free. All right, back to the good compromise. The idea behind Voltage is really simple. They're kind of like Amazon Web Services, but for Bitcoin Lightning nodes. They provide the infrastructure, make installing apps like Thunderhub or BTC Pay as easy as a click, and they can even help you manage your node and you get full control and full custody while enjoying all the benefits of having your very own dedicated Lightning node running on powerful hardware and super fast internet. Basically, if you want to accept Lightning in a non-custodial way, that means you're gonna have to run your own node. And that's what all the rest of the following solutions do. And Voltage is the good compromise because it makes it very, very easy to do that. Let's take a look at why this option is so appealing. Security. Voltage offers you a full node complete with your very own private keys. They have no access to those private keys, which are encrypted, and they handle backups and upgrades for you. Their entry-level nodes operate solely on Tor, the onion routing network for privacy and security, and connecting to your node only happens through REST APIs and LND gRPC. Don't worry about that if you don't understand it. They even support IP whitelisting and don't open things up like command line access. I honestly tried in my research to find some holes in their security to give them a lower ranking because I still kind of feel like the whole cloud node thing is more vulnerable. For example, Voltage is a very visible and centralized provider and bad actors are more likely to focus an attack like a DDoS on them rather than individual nodes running on home networks. But honestly, given that even your home internet has vulnerabilities, I have no choice but to give Voltage a four on security. And even then, that was almost a five. But let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Privacy. On the surface, you have full control over your Voltage node and you can choose to run apps like BTC Pay that are non-custodial and privacy focused. 
BTC Pay, of course, generates a new address for every transaction, stores minimal customer data, and of course, works on the ultra-private Lightning Network for fast, secure, and private transactions. The only caveat here is that Voltage does have to collect some information about you, such as your email and billing address, so they would be able to associate you with your node and the addresses to your node if they were, for example, subpoenaed. Unless, of course, you take extra steps to protect yourself. So I'm gonna give them a four. Cost. BTC Pay charges no fees and works on Lightning, so that's great. Also, while Voltage does cost money every month, their full node and BTC Pay installations start at something like $9 a month, which is nothing, especially if you consider that the hardware to run your own node will probably cost $300 plus, and you'll still need to pay a hosting provider to host a reverse proxy on a server. You'll need to pay for opening and closing channels, but that cost is mitigated by the fact that you'll probably earn some money routing payments for others as well. For this reason, I give Voltage a 5 out of 5 for cost. Setup. Running a full node, which you kind of have to do if you want to accept Lightning payments non-custodially, literally can't get any easier than setting up via Voltage. They spool up your node, give you an easy to use dashboard, and one-click installations for apps such as BTC Pay. BTC Pay, in turn, integrates pretty easily and smoothly with things like Shopify and WooCommerce, and you can even set up webhooks to Zapier, QuickBooks, and so on if you're reasonably tech savvy. While managing your own node itself can be a hassle with a huge learning curve to things like opening up channels, rebalancing, and managing liquidity, Voltage actually offers a premium service to do all of that for you. Still, actually configuring BTC Pay and all of the integrations is much more difficult than just installing BitPay or CoinGate, so I give it a four. Self-custody. A Voltage node is a full node, which only you control the keys to. The Lightning node that you'll run is connected to that internal node, and therefore all the funds in your Lightning channels are in your control. Additionally, and this is important, BTC Pay allows you to connect to a hardware wallet for on-chain transactions, meaning that you can actually receive payments directly into cold storage. This earns this combination tech stack a five out of five. Customer convenience. Like BitPay, etc., BTC Pay easily and smoothly integrates into your shopping cart, handles currency conversion, provides an invoice with an amount, and requires the customer to do nothing but scan and pay. Plus, BTC Pay offers a full-fledged, feature-rich POS terminal, which also makes in-person transactions very easy. Plus, with Voltage, these invoices will load quickly and securely. It's an easy five. Vendor convenience. Here, again, the automation of BTC Pay for invoice generation, depositing directly into your cold wallet, and providing you with all the information for transactions, payments, settlement, and whatever, make this a very easy setup for vendors. Plus, with BTC Pay's point of sale, customers can actually check themselves out using pre-configured products, kind of like a self-checkout at the grocery store. I took one point off here for a total of four because you still have to manage a lightning node with channels and so on, but again, this is a service that Voltage can do for you, albeit at a premium price. Automation and integration. As with BitPay, BTC Pay integrates with whatever you need it to via webhooks and Zapier. You just need to be relatively savvy, but you can connect it to your web store, your accounting software, your Slack channels, or wherever else you need, and get all the information that you need about your transactions when and where you need it. That makes it a five out of five. By the way, one added perk of both this method and the one that follows, publicity. By setting up your own branded Lightning Network node, you'll be visible to other node operators on websites like Amboss and 1ML, and you may see some traffic from Bitcoiners curious about the website behind the node. Finally, the secure way. All right, we've reached the end of the list, and if you've made it this far, you are awesome. Before I let you go, I wanna introduce you to the most secure way to accept Bitcoin and the way that tried and true Bitcoiners like me opt for, and that's hosting your very own node and connecting to BTC Pay over Tor, or the Onion Routing Network. The idea here is this. You host your very own Bitcoin and Lightning node via something like Umbral or Citadel, Raspberry Blitz, or even MyNode, which you have physical access to on a secure internet connection that you control. 
In practice, what this means is that you have a spare computer or a Raspberry Pi locked away in your electrical closet and a reverse proxy connecting to the built-in BTC installation over the Tor network. While this is probably the most secure way to do things, it's definitely not the easiest. Let's look at it in more detail. Security. Because you have physical access to the node, there's a certain level of both security and comfort, assuming of course that your home internet is properly secured. And I've done previous videos about how to secure your node. All traffic is routed over Tor, preventing others from finding your node on the clear web or in the physical world. The only connection to the outside world is a reverse proxy over Tor, and even that is only to BTC Pay, which should be configured to accept funds into a cold wallet such as Trezor. This means that only the funds that you need for Lightning Network are stored on your node, minimizing the risk. The only real risks here are attacks on your local network or an attack on the proxy server to redirect payments elsewhere, which you should be able to secure. Plus, since your small potatoes, one website out there, people are much less likely to try to attack you than they are someone like BitPay or even Voltage.Cloud. Conclusion, five out of five. Privacy. Here again, privacy is a selling point. As I mentioned before, BTC Pay will generate a new address for every on-chain transaction and use the highly private Lightning Network for off-chain. Nobody will know about your transactions and the information connecting you to your wallet is stored locally on hardware that you control. People will know your node's Lightning ID when they pay you, but that's the only information they can find. The only small leak in the security here is that the server company that you're using for hosting a reverse proxy will know the Tor address to your BTC pay, but even that is a very minimal concern. Obviously, I give it a five out of five. Cost. At first glance, this would be the most cost-effective solution. You pay no fees and your customer pays whatever on-chain or lightning fees happen to be at the time at the market rate. However, there are costs associated with going this route. First, you'll probably spend $300 or more on hardware. Then you'll pay a few dollars a month for an external server to create the reverse proxy connecting your Tor BTC pay installation to the clear web. You're gonna need a really fast internet connection at home. And finally, you'll have to shoulder the cost of opening and closing channels. Though this cost again is mitigated by the fact that you may earn some money routing payments for others. Because of the high upfront costs, however, I actually gave this method a three out of five. Setup. Now, this is by far the most complicated method of accepting Bitcoin. Setting up your very own node isn't hard these days and folks like Umbral and Citadel have made it pretty much plug and play but with that said, you'll need to learn a lot about running a Lightning node, which by the way, you can do by checking out my playlist on YouTube. And you'll need to learn about opening and closing channels, managing liquidity, rebalancing, and more. While setting up and connecting BTC pay to your website or point of sale is not too bad, especially if you only need access to it in your physical storefront on an iPad or say over Tor, if you actually need to connect it to the clear web, for example, to connect it to your e-commerce website or donation page, it does get tricky. You'll probably need an expert to help you create that reverse proxy I've been talking about, as well as a clearnet domain name where your BTC pay installation will be available. By the way, if you need help with this, I recommend just hiring someone on Fiverr. You can use my link to support the channel by visiting jle.vi slash Fiverr. For this reason, I actually gave this method only one out of five for setup. Self-custody. As you can probably guess, this method is hands down the best method for self-custody. Not only do you have full control and custody over the funds on your Bitcoin and Lightning node, but you also can accept payments directly into cold storage via a watch-only wallet, a paper wallet, or a hardware wallet. Additionally, you even have physical custody over the hardware running the node. Needless to say, this method gets a five. Customer convenience. As with a good compromise version, BTC Pay makes things very convenient for the customer for all the reasons I mentioned before. Plus, you can even use additional apps such as LNBits, TPOS to accept payments over Tor without so much setup. 
However, I will admit that loading invoices over Tor because of the way it routes traffic can be slow, meaning that customers either online or in person might have to wait a few seconds, maybe even 30 seconds, depending on the condition of the Tor network for an invoice to load. Plus, your home network is more likely to go out due to power outages than a dedicated cloud node. And that can be frustrating and lead to confusion and lost sales. So I gave this method a four out of five. Vendor convenience. While setup can be a pain in the ass here, once you're up and running, it's pretty much the same as the voltage option. Day-to-day -day operation is easy and automated. Customers can help themselves and all you need to do is manage channels and liquidity on your lightning node and rebalancing. Now, just as with the voltage option, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Automation and integration. Here again, there's really no difference between this option and the one before it once you have everything set up. All the integrations available on BTC Pay are at your fingertips and limited only by your own technical ability with things like webhooks and Zapier. Just as with Voltage, this gets a five out of five. Now, as I mentioned before, you'll also benefit here from the publicity of running your own Lightning node. Summary and conclusion. Today, we've looked at a lot of different options, each with their own pros and cons. We've seen options that take minutes to install and options that will take days or even weeks to get up and running properly. While nearly all of the options that I've shared are non-custodial on some level, we've seen some that violate the core principles of Bitcoin and others that embody the finest expression of those ideals. Now, here's the full comparison table I promised and the total scores, as well as a chart for those of you who love quantitative data. As you'll see, the good compromise does win out pretty clearly over all the other options. But which one is right for you? Ultimately, I'd love to see each and every one of you running your own well-maintained Bitcoin Lightning node, supporting not only the network, but also the ideal of self-custody. With that said, I know that that's not practical or even necessary for each and every one of you. So here are my tips. If you're casually accepting occasional payments at a physical location, such as a farmer's market, a bar, or a store, simply use the Breeze POS on an iPad or Android tablet. If you're running a thriving e-commerce business that sees a lot of traffic, it's probably worth investing $9 a month on a voltage node that will keep up with generating invoices smoothly. And depending on how much time you wanna to commit to it, you may just choose to hire voltage to maintain that node and your liquidity for you. Now, if you care a lot about privacy, self-custody, and supporting the Bitcoin network, then join the tens of thousands of people like myself and run your own node. If you only need an in-person POS, you can stop there and either access that node's BTC installation via your local network, or if you're using it on the go, you can access BTC Pay via a Tor browser on your mobile device or tablet. If, on the other hand, you wanna set up a clear web donation page or connect to a shopping cart, then you will need to set up a reverse proxy. To be honest, this is the whole reason I set up my Bitcoin node in the first place. I wanted to accept lightning payments and donations in a non-custodial way. On that note, if you've enjoyed this video, then please feel free to send me some sats directly to my Lightning node in a non-custodial way by visiting tips at lightning.jle.vi or just using this QR code in an enabled Lightning address compatible wallet. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, share it with someone who you want to integrate Bitcoin in their business and visit us on our website. If you end up accepting Bitcoin because of this video, I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. Take care, thanks for watching, and happy hodling.